All right, I'm about to show you one of the best drummers that you've likely never heard of. This man's name is Mason Guidry and he plays incredible drum solos. In watching them and a bunch of others, it got me thinking, what makes professional drummers play such engaging drum solos that make us think, damn, I've come up with a few tips to give you on how to play a really good drum solo. Let's get back to Mason Guidry. <laughs> So in that drum solo, there was a lot going on. It is very clear that he can play blazing patterns around the kit at really high speeds. What was gripping there is that he was playing at a really high volume and then he dipped to kind of play softly and then the solo built again. So you had this high intensity peak to a low, building to a high again to end off the solo. And that is the first tip I'm going to give you use dynamics. Using dynamics in solos or using highs and lows gives someone watching suspense. If it was all loud or if it was all soft, it would be too much at once. So going high and low kind of creates a story. The point of playing music is to make the listener feel something. So by going up and down, you're playing with feelings of the listener. <laughs> All right, that was Zach Cruz. We all know him, we all love him. While he's a funny guy, he is such a good drummer as well. What he did in that solo, which was so effective and it really engaged the crowd, is he was ripping it and then he stopped. And people were thinking, what's happening? Why aren't the drums playing? So they kind of re-engage as that's happening. And then when he goes back in, it's more effective. So what exactly is he doing there? He is leaving space. A lot of us, including myself, tend to fill drum solos with notes, just kind of playing through subdivisions, trying to play all the best licks and patterns that we have, but it is so effective to leave space because space in music is just as important as the notes. Again, you wanna make the listener feel something. So by leaving space in between playing busy notes, the listener will feel more engaged. This drum solo has been doing the rounds on Instagram over the past few months. It is Lana Lewis again. Every time he releases something new, I just think, how can this guy get any better? There's a very specific idea happening in this drum solo, and it is one of the best ideas to keep an audience engaged when playing a solo. And that idea is that he is keeping a backbeat throughout the whole thing. A backbeat is when you play a consistent snare drum somewhere to anchor a groove. And what's happening in this solo is his snare drum is coming on beat three of every bar. So check it out again to see if you can hear that. Okay, so for this specific solo, I'm going to call this pocket. Pocket solos are always a hit because a listener can engage easier with drum beats rather than drum fills and patterns. You just have to remember that most of the people in your crowd are not drummers, so they would rather hear a cool drum beat being played over and over and over than hearing intricate things that their brains can't comprehend. So Lionel played a bunch of intricate things here, but he kept it anchored with a backbeat and that's what made this solo so cool to listen to.
That was Ari Hunig, and if you're not into jazz music, that is probably another drummer that you may not know of. He is a fantastic soloist because he nails these ideas every solo that keeps crowds engaged, and he just does things that make you think, wow, that sounded cool to listen to. What he's doing in that solo that I showed there is he is repeating a pattern by playing the rack tom constantly. He keeps going back to it. So again, we're going back to what does the crowd think because that is how you engage, you get into their minds. It is very common for a crowd to get lost when listening to you play things around the drums. So the best way to pull them back is to repeat patterns that they have started hearing constantly. The more you play that pattern, the more they feel anchored in what you're playing. So Ari going back to the rack tom constantly is keeping the crowd engaged and that is why repeating patterns in a solo is so important. That was Antonio Sanchez, another great jazz drummer, but also just an overall fantastic musician. What he's doing in that solo is he is sticking to an idea. This kind of goes hand in hand with the last point I had, but sticking to idea can be a bit more broad. Again, what he's doing here is he keeps going back to the same thing on the drums. And he's kind of changing rhythms here and there, but you know he is playing between his ride cymbal and snare drum and he's doing this kind of intricate thing and as you watch that solo you keep waiting for him to go back to that and then you keep waiting to see how is he going to make it interesting while he keeps going back to that and that is what is so effective. The tip here being stick to an idea. If you want to learn how to play good drum solos from Lionel Lewis himself, I recommend checking out his courses on playing drum solos on the Drumio platform. It is a paid platform, but you can get a free 30 day trial from the link in my description. I also recommend checking out all of Lionel Lewis's other courses and drum lessons on Drumio. A lot of people think Drumio is just for beginners, but I personally use this platform as like a dedicated space to be taught by Lionel Lewis, who is one of my favorite drummers. There are so many other things you can do as well, including playing to songs, playing notation from songs, and just getting lessons from some of the best drummers in the world. Whether you are a beginner, intermediate drummer, or advanced drummer, there is something for you here. So check that out in the description. It is such a high value product to look into. If you want me to teach you a bit more, I recommend checking out whatever video YouTube is telling you to watch right now. It will be on the screen.